What is good you guys? It's your boy Bolo and I'm back again with another tutorial today. And today's tutorial is going to be a little bit different because I'm going to show you guys what I make beats on when I'm on the road. Bolo! Most of you guys know I make most of my beats on my MPCX right here, which I love it. It's dope. I do a lot of stuff on Logic 2 and a little bit on FL as well. But when I'm out of town and when I have to do certain big projects, I like to bring my MPC studio, which is right here. This is my travel version of the MPC um, X. Let me throw this. But when I'm out of town, just like, you know, going to New York or LA and I'm just doing meetings or whatever like that. And I'm, I'm only going to be there for a couple of days and I really don't have any studio sessions set up. I make most of my beats on this, my iPad Pro using Beatmaker 3. Now, the title is not clickbait. I actually did make $10,000 selling beats using Beatmaker 3. Now, there is a backstory to that. I actually made the money because of a group that I was with. I produced a whole EP and two of the songs on that EP was produced on my iPad. Um, I've used Beatmaker ever since Beatmaker 2 and then Beatmaker 3 came out and it just, it's a crazy app. You guys, I'm telling you, if you have an iPad, get it because it's very cheap and the sampling capabilities, everything in it is just super dope. Only thing I wish I could use with it is a mouse, but Hopefully Apple gets to that later on, but Beatmaker 3 is definitely a beast of a program for your iPad. You can make beats in it. You can record in it. It is just exceptional. The good thing about it is I'm actually a customer. I'm a consumer of the product. They're not paying me for this. I just really enjoy using it because it's just a great product to use. Yes, I make beats on my iPad and they come out super dope. I can save them online and uh, pull them off, still track things out, still do everything that I want to do, just like I'm using my computer, but just everything is in an all-in-one unit. Um, I'm gonna show you guys how to make a beat in it. Uh, I'm gonna do a step-by-step -step and just show you like how to do like a quick um, sample beat inside of it, um, because this is my first time using the little aerial camera pointing down on it. So I'm gonna get better at it, and I'm gonna do more videos if you want me to do more videos of it. And uh, you know, make sure you guys like, make sure you guys subscribe, make sure you guys comment, and make sure you guys turn on those post notifications so you'll know the next time I have another video available. So let's get to the video. Let's go. Okay, so first thing I need to do is open up Beatmaker 3, which is right here. Dope program. Let me, um, actually, let me just close this out so you'll see how it looks when it first opens up. So let me just open this up. This is how it looks when it opens up. I'm gonna do a new session. Um, and I'm going to show you just a basic layout of it. Um, right now, you are in a basic layout of just seeing the track view right here, which is incredible for a program like this. The track view is just really good, and it looks just like every other DAW. Um, now, with the track view, to make your beats in here, you, of course, you have your loop, which you can stretch like this, which I'm going to stretch it now to do it uh, nine bars because I like to make beats in double time. You have your quantize right here. I already have my set. Um, you have automations, which you can do that. You have your chord button, your play, your stop, all that good stuff. You have your tempo right here. Shows you your beats. Everything is right there in this program. It works flawlessly. It is just a really good program for dirt cheap, in my opinion. Um, right here, you have your FX. You have your aux returns. You have your main out. And then you have your banks, which that's where you're going to make your beats in. So... Um, think of your tracks as banks on here. So if it says a bank, it doesn't mean like a whole bank, but it's like it's tracks. And this is just for the, you know, the easy version of making beats because you can do so much stuff. You can do scenes, you can do patterns. It's, it's, it's so cool what you can do in this program. So let's just go ahead and make a quick beat. Instead of me talking so much, you can just kind of see what I'm doing and I'll kind of explain what I'm doing as I'm going. So um, there's two ways to add tracks. You can hit this little plus sign right here to add tracks. Or you can go right here to this pad right here, which you have the whole pad right here. You have um, this pad that does 16 pads, or it can go up to 64 pads. And you can actually change the range of the pads, depending on if you want to go up a semitone or go up a whole octave or go down a semitone or go down a whole octave. It is crazy. 
So first thing what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load a sample that I like. Um, I like to use Looperman samples. I actually imported those into my imports. There's actually another way you can do it, but I like to import mine into import so I know everything is at. Go to my Looperman samples. Let me pick a sample that I like. I actually kind of like that. So let me go ahead and import that. All I have to do is just drag this into a pad. I'm going to drag it onto that pad. Sounds good. Um, so what I'm going to do is I need to find out the tempo of that. So let me go right here to where you see this wave line right here. I'm going to click onto that and that opens up the sampler parameter. And this thing is a beast. It has everything, as you can see, the layout is crazy, and it is super easy to chop samples. And even when you chop samples, you can stretch it to the tempo after it's already been chopped. I might do another video on that, but I'm just going to keep this very simple. So right now, we don't know the actual tempo of the sample, but there's a way for us to do it very easy in this program. We just click on the BPM right here, and we're going to calculate the tempo. So right now, at 8 beats, it is 70.5. We're going to do it at 16 beats because we're doing it at double time and the sample is at 141 beats per minute. Super easy. And we have a smaller version of the pad while we're in here so we can just, um, you know. So super dope. Um, I'm going to leave it like that for right now. And what I'm going to do also is I'm going to turn on live stretch, which is right here. So this is when we change the tempo it will change the actual tempo of the sample without um, messing with the pitch or anything. And to be honest with you, the algorithms in this program are light years above the algorithms that are inside of the MPCX and the MPC software. The algorithms are just great. So I'm gonna just do high performance for right now. And I'm gonna go out here, go to my pad, and I'm going to make me a, um, four bar loop, but double time is going to be a eight bar loop. So let me do that. My quantize already set. Let me just do this real quick. Oh, my bad. I forgot to change the uh, tempo to 141, which you just click on that and just slide this over just like that to 141. Um, got the tempo set. It's at 141 BPM. Um, everything is set. Quantize is set. So let's go ahead and do and loop with this. All right, so I already have my loop turned on. So as you can see right here in the screen, it's already set. And let me just drag this all the way out because that was where the last note is and we can Shrink up the screen like that. So now what we want to do is we want to add in um, maybe like another sound. So let's go ahead and add a clap in here. So let me go to where I have my claps. Um, let's go into this kit right here. Sounds pretty cool. Let's add the clap in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on this keys button right here. That way I can um, find the best clap that's in the right key range. So right here, little C, and then we can go all the way up. Super dope. We can either do it that way, or what we can do is we can do it 64. Either way we want to do it. And then right now, if we want to go even lower, what we can do is we can actually change the octave. We can go up an octave. Or we can go down an octave. Works all good. Or we can go up semitones. So I usually like to keep my middle C right here. So what I'm gonna do is um, we're just gonna go down until we get the middle C right there. This is just for tutorial purposes only. Like that, sounds good for right now. So let's go ahead and use that one.
All right, sounds good to me. Now, one of the good things I like about this program is we're gonna um, add some hi hats, but we're gonna do this totally different than from a lot of programs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add another track, and as you can see, when I add a track, it creates another track in here as well. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add a hi hat. So let's pick a nice hi hat. I like that one. And uh, let's put it right here. So I'm gonna put this on a semitone and pull this right here. Sounds good. So now that we have the hi-hat in, instead of us steady doing like this while we're recording it, what we can do is go right here under where it says bank right here. It has velocity, roll, wheels, scales, chords. It's crazy. Uh, you can actually make chords in here as well too. I'm gonna go right here to roll. And what we have is we have our different values right here. So what we can do now is instead of us um, pressing this, we can just hold this down and and or as simple as that. And even if you have the quantize on, this overrides the quantize when you are doing these rolls. The rolls will still be in quantize, but the actual roll groups will be um, not assigned to the quantized value that you have over the master quantized. So let's go ahead and do that real quick and show you how easy this is. All right, that was very, very, very simple. And as you can see, you can change the velocities on here as well. So if I want to do it at lower velocity, it's just super easy. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a bass. Um, we're gonna be a very quick and simple track. So let me add a bass in here. Um, I have a bass I love to use that can just cut through on a lot of things. Um, so let me go in here um, to my import folder and let me kick. Let me get this bass from, I think it was this kit, and it was, it was, I think. Shock 808, that's what I like. Sounds really good. And what I'm gonna do is I need to find out if everything is in the right key um, for the bass. Um, so I wanna have it on middle C, so. Um, what key is gonna be good? Let me put this onto middle C right here. So there's two ways you can do it. You can do it with the pads. You can do it. You can do it through the 64. I'm an MPC guy, so I like mine right here. Or you can do it on the keys. <laughs> this, I'm telling you, this program is crazy. So let me see if this is gonna be the right key and we're just gonna mess around with it till we find out what's gonna be the root note. So that sounds like it. Um, this is right now in F sharp. Let's go ahead and play it. Simple as that, and as you can see, it has everything in our track view. Now, of course, um, just for the hell of them, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put a kick in here as well. So let me add another one in here. Let me just add like a nice little kick in here. Um, 
think that'll sound good. All right. Let's see how that sounds. Sounds good. Let's add that in there. Sounds good. I was about to add a roll to it, which I might still do, but this is a tutorial, so I'm not going to do too much. All right, so basically right now we have a whole beat done. It sounds good. Let's go into track mode, and we're basically just going to track this out. Now, I'm pretty sure there's another way you can do this a little bit faster, but I'm just going to do it the way I've been doing it because there's not too many videos explaining this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right here to highlight everything. And I'm just going to repeat everything for a couple bars. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take some elements out that I don't need um, as of right now. Um, don't need a kick right now. Don't need a bass right now. Um, I'm going to take this kick out after the hook. Um, do the same for the second verse. Um, for the bases that's the hook we're gonna do 12 bar verses so um so after every one i'm gonna pull this back so we can have like a like a kick like a bass out like a little bit and uh basically and then what i do as well is take out kick and then a uh, hook part towards the let's do it on this side right here just on that hook right there so it's not in a particular order because we don't really know what how the beat structure is going to be and i'm going to take this kick out right before the hook starts and uh take out the hi-hats too for right now and so basically i have a beat so what i'm going to do is um, since I already have a verse and a hook, I'm going to take it from right here and I'm just going to um, repeat that. And so basically I have a whole song done. So let's go ahead and play it. I'm going to take it um, off of loop right here and just play it. So pretty much that's it. Um, now what we can do is if we wanted to, we can mix this beat because we we have a mixer right here. We can mix the beat and we can turn down certain instruments, but that'll be for another video. And we can also master in here using um, basically um, audio unit apps, which are basically VSTs for the uh, iPad. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you get Beatmaker 3. Um, I'm not sponsored by the company or nothing like that. I'm just a user and I really love it. And I think you guys will love it too. All right. Peace out.